gardening. It's one of the biggest pastimes for people during this lockdown period. Uh, I don't know if you've been out in your garden doing some stuff or whether you've had some uh, window boxes that you've been planting seeds in and watching things grow. I've seen various social media posts of people uh, proudly uh, posting their photos of things that they've, they've grown or, or, or not grown, uh, various levels of success uh, on that one. Uh, but it's been a massive pastime for people during lockdown. Maybe it has been for you. Me and Joe, my wife, have been out in that garden every single day uh, since mid-March. Uh, doing something, either uh, shoveling or, or weeding or planting. Uh, as part of that, we also have been doing some sunflower seeds on the, on the windowsills with our kids. Uh, someone from church very kindly uh, gave us some sunflower seeds uh, a while back. And uh, well, they've been in the back of a drawer for about two years. And we've got these things out, they look dry, and we thought there's no chance anything's going to grow out of these dry seeds that have been stuck in a drawer for two years. And lo and behold, actually... We were right. <laughs> uh, yes, this has not gone incredibly well on the uh, on the sunflower front. Uh, my general approach to gardening is a lot like my general approach to parenting. Just give it some water every now and again and hope for the best. Um, if it starts to look like it's keeling over, put it outside or, or something. Uh, but the, the problem with that partly is that actually the compost is too wet. Uh, the soil that we've put it in, in that pot, we watered it too much and it got too damp and just nothing came out of it. The soil wasn't the right soil for the job. Actually, we've, we've been doing some gardening and another friend of ours at church has been giving us some brilliant advice. Uh, and as we've looked in the garden, they've said, you've got to, you've got to know your soil because some soil in the garden is really hard and rocky. Some of it's really uh, wet and boggy and some of it's just got clay underneath. This doesn't mean nothing can grow from those things, but uh, this friend said you've got to know your soil. Know your soil. Uh, and as we look at this passage in Mark together, we look at the words of Jesus, we're going to take time to know our soil. Uh, we're going to look at the seed that Jesus is planting, the things that he's saying here and saying into our lives today, the seed that he's planting and that the soil uh, that is going on in our hearts. Jesus is speaking uh, metaphorically, and he's using the, the picture of, of different types of soil to describe different kinds of hardness or softness of our own hearts. And so Jesus tells this, uh, tells this story of a, a sower, a man who's scattering his seeds, and it, it, the seed lands on different types of ground and produces different kinds of, of results. And, and firstly, we're gonna look at the seed. First, we're going to look at the seed that Jesus wants to, to plant. And you can look at verse uh, 9 together. Uh, he's told his story, told the parable, and then he says, verse 9, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Lol, good farming joke by Jesus there. He's talking about crops and farming. And then he says, ears, ears of corn, ears of wheat. Never mind, you'll get it another day. When he was alone... The twelve and the others around him uh, asked him about the parables. Uh, he told them, the secret to the kingdom of God has been given to you. He's planted a seed. But to those on the outside, everything is said in parables so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving and ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, and here's the bit, here's the seed. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. And that is the seed that Jesus is trying to plant. Uh, that's the seed that Jesus is trying to plant uh, in, the, in the words of the Bible. It's also the seed that he's trying to plant for you here and now today. To turn and be forgiven. That's Jesus' whole message uh, whilst he's on earth. To turn and be forgiven. To turn from the destructive, self-destructive path that we've been down our self-serving paths of self-destruction and to, to turn uh, to find a new way that follows him the designer and creator of life who knows how it works best to turn and to follow him and to find forgiveness in that that to know that everything you've ever done wrong uh, and everything that you're gonna do wrong can be forgiven, can be nailed to the cross with him and, and taken away and be forgiven. 
That's the seed. Uh, that's the seed that Jesus is trying to plant. That's the seed that Jesus wants to plant here and now. And so we need to know our own soil, our own heart position to understand how that seed then comes into our lives and how we react to it. And that the first kind of soil that Jesus describes is in verse uh, 15, as he kind of gathers his, his, uh, his 12 friends, his inner circle of friends, starts to explain the parable. Verse 15, he says, some seed goes along the path where the word is sown. And as soon as someone hears it, uh, Satan comes in and takes away the word that was sown to them. So the first kind of soil is, is, is this path. The path where the seed kind of stays on the surface level and straight away Satan comes in and tries to steal it away. Now in our house right now, uh, we are really into the Narnia books. Uh, the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe is a firm favourite. Uh, and in that story, it's really interesting how when the White Witch appears, uh, she first speaks to, to Edmund, one of, the, one of the brothers and sisters, and uh, when she appears, she doesn't come with a full force of kind of evil power and uh, full force. She kind of comes in quite nicely and kind of in through the side door. And uh, she sets herself up as quite an attractive ruling queen over Narnia. And the way she lures uh, Edmund in is by trying to trick him, uh, trying to treat him to sweets, Turkish delight. Uh, and that's how she gets her way with Edmund. Edmund is totally fooled by her. She didn't come in with full force. She kind of came in with deception. It's interesting, isn't it, that when we think about Satan in the Bible, when we get introduced to him first thing in Genesis, he comes into the humans in a, in a, in a garden. And he doesn't come with, with full blaring force, but he comes in as a deceptor and as an accuser. Things we know about Satan from the Bible aren't about little red horns and a, and a trident, but they're about him being an accuser and a deceptor. What did he say to Adam and Eve in the garden? Did God really say? He's a deceptor. Is your soil like the path? You'll know this if you have that deceptive voice saying, did God really say that you could turn? Did God really say that you could be forgiven? He's an accuser. You're too far down the wrong path to ever turn back. Forget about it. He's an accuser. You've done things that can't be forgiven. If you hear those voices, you've got to know that you're in danger of being like the, the soul that's like the path where Satan can swoop in and steal away this seed that Jesus wants to sow for you. The second kind of soil uh, is a rocky kind of soil. And uh, this is in verse 16. Uh, Jesus says, others like the seen, uh, seed thrown on uh, rocky places, they hear the word and at once they receive it with joy. Hooray, turn and be forgiven, sounds good. Uh, but since they've got no root, it only lasts a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they fall away quickly. Kids, I don't know if you uh, enjoyed the story Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, if you've never read it before, get a parent or a grandparent to read you Pilgrim's Progress. I was a bit of a Pilgrim's Progress skeptic, if I'm honest with you, until I actually read it. And it's brilliant that the main character, Christian, has literally done this thing of he, he's turned. He's, he was on a certain path and he turns to go on a new path. Uh, that leads towards a, a, a new king and a new rule. And there's an, a character in it called Pliable. And now Pliable comes after Christian. And he's like trying to get him to, to turn around. And, and Christian explains to him, look, that, that old place is, is no good, but the new place we're going, I, I, I don't know what the path holds, but we're going somewhere great. And Pliable hears this, he, he kind of receives this seed, he hears this word and he's like, I'm on board. Let's go, Christian, this is great. I can't wait to get there, fantastic. And he joins Christian on his path. He, he turns and joins this uh, new path. Now, Pliable's a bit of an idiot, uh, <laughs> as it's portrayed in the, in the films. Actually, in the films, he's voiced by someone with a slightly northern accent. So, nice one, Bedford Bunyan. Uh, anyway, regardless of that, it's a good story. Uh, but Pliable goes down the path. And they're barely a few hundred yards down the path uh, where, they, where they go into a swamp. 
uh, and the swamp represents that kind of persecution and hardship and they've barely got mud on them and pliable is already like i'm out i'm out i wonder if you, you can never relate to to pliable where the whole christian message sounds great to you what the, the, the seed that jesus wants to plant in your life of turning be forgiven that sounds great and you receive that with great joy but actually there's no root there and actually when when any uh possibility of persecution comes whether that's just mean words in a playground or in your college or sixth form or in your workplace or from your family actually i'm out i'm going to abandon it if you relate to that maybe you identify that there is a rocky soil in your life in your heart uh, the third kind of soil to identify, we're going to know our soils well this morning. Uh, the third kind of soil is found in verse 18, and this is a thorny kind of soil. A thorny kind of soil. Verse 18, still others, like seed sown among the thorns, hear the word, great, uh, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things come in and, and they choke the word, making it unfruitful. Worries. And wealth. Uh, maybe those are two things that that mar your thinking. Uh, certainly through this COVID coronavirus period, um, worries about wealth, maybe even other things that that come in and distract you. Uh, maybe there are other distractions. Uh, maybe there's other priorities. Maybe you're someone who spends a lot of time scrolling through social media whilst trying to take in a sermon or a talk. Uh, maybe, if you're anything like me, you had full intentions to read a ton of stuff and get through some books during lockdown. Hooray, I've got some time to get through books, but actually uh, things have come up and prioritised themselves, which, thinking back, probably weren't priorities. Uh, things come up and, and choke out worries about wealth and, and, a, and a desire for wealth over the word come in and choke any possibility of that seed growing. Uh, the fourth kind of soil is actually a good soil. Verse 20, others like the seed sown on good soil, they hear the word, they accept it, and it produces a crop. Some 30, some 60, some 100 times uh, what was sown. So we'll go uh, on a new direction. And you know that if you have good soil in your life, you are on a new direction. You've heard that seed. You know that you can be forgiven. And actually, the fruit of that is that you are on a new direction, that you are seeing things in your life born out of the spirit and not out of your own effort. Uh, actually, I wasn't completely true about the sunflower seeds. We have had a little bit of crop. <laughs> in fact, this confuses me a lot. How has that done nothing? And this literally has two in there. Do, is that even a thing? Do sunflower seeds do two at a time? I don't know. We managed it. I called Garden Rescue. We, we've, we've won. Um, but actually, because the soil is right in there, in this little white pot of glory, there is good soil. Uh, how do I know it's good soil? Because there's fruit. Uh, because there's crop. Another way for you to know that there's, uh, there's good soil in your life is that, again, your, your crop goes. What does Jesus say at the end? There's some 30, some 60, some 100 times what was sown. He's talking about that seed being re-scattered out of your life. Uh, don't worry about the, the numbers. That's a red herring. He's talking about uh, an overspill of your life into how you talk to others. Um, one of the things we've planted in our garden is, uh, is a, a kind of a, a foxglove. Uh, it's a tall sort of flowering thing. And if you know anything about foxgloves, which I did not until about two weeks ago, uh, but here I am as some sort of foxglove expert. Uh, foxgloves are like experts in themselves of self-seeding. Is that a thing? Someone will correct me, but, but they, they self-seed and they're really, really good at it. Uh, so when all the flowers fall off and the seeds fall off, they're really good at multiplying. So we've got like two foxgloves in the garden right now. It apparently, within like a year or so, we might have a dozen of fox clubs. They're really good at sharing their seed. I wonder if you have good soil, a good heart, who accepted the seed. What, are you like the foxgloves of the evangelism 
world. I once heard someone talk on this passage and they said, if you, if you want to see more fruit uh, as you share your faith with other people, if you want to see more fruit, you've got to scatter more seeds. And maybe that's a sign that we have good soil in our lives. So five kinds of soil. We're going to know our soil this morning. Uh, there's the path, there's rocky ground, there's the thorns, and there's the good soil. And I wonder if you've identified with any of those uh, kinds of soil today. But, but here's a question that might be on your mind. This has been on my mind just in the last few days as I've been thinking about talking to you today is, is how do you change your soil? Like if you identified with the path or the, the rocky ground or the thorns, how do you actually change your kind of soil? Because we all want to end up with good soil, right? And so just a brief word on change and then a brief word on invitation. Change and invitation. I think there are ways that you can change your soil. I think there are things that you can do to do the gardening in your life, as it were. Let's take the first kind of, for example, the path where the birds come in. How do you get rid of birds if you're doing your gardening or your farming? You put up scarecrows. And maybe you need some scarecrows in your life. Uh, maybe you need to text a friend uh, to look out for you. Maybe you need to text a friend and say, call them a scarecrow. Um, they may not take too kindly to that, especially if they've got a lockdown haircut thing going on. But mate, will you be my scarecrow? Uh, will you look out for me? Uh, when those voices come up in my, in my life, in my head, when I start being deceived and accused, uh, would you look out for me? Would you be a scarecrow? Would you help me do the gardening here? Uh, maybe if you identify with the thorns uh, and weeds, what do you do to get th rid of thorns and weeds? Y you've got to do a bit of work. You've got to do a bit of gardening in your, in your life. You, you maybe need to get into your Bible a bit. Maybe you need to devote some proper time to prayer. Let's not forget that Jesus, like he was the ultimate physician, really is the ultimate gardener as well. In fact, he was mistaken for being the gardener when uh, he was seen at the empty tomb. That should be ringing all sorts of alarm bells. He's the ultimate perfect gardener who will do the work of churning the soil in your heart for good. Uh, maybe there's some work that needs to be done to get rid of some weeds and thorns. Uh, the hard soil. Again, just ask yourself, how do you get rid of hard soil in a garden? You pour water on it. And Jesus himself calls himself the living water. Maybe you need to invite Jesus in as that living water, as that breath of spirit life and say, Jesus, I, I can't change this myself. I need you, living water, to douse me, to drench me, to change my hard heart to a soft one that I might receive the seed and it to bear fruit. And finally, if you identify with the good soil, then I'm pleased for you, I'm praying for you, that's great. Potentially a word of warning though, is that Jesus at this point in his ministry is surrounded by Pharisees. Pharisees were the, the religious kind of do-gooders, the people who ticked the box, the people who listened and sort of took it all in, did the right things, said the right things, logged onto the right YouTube channel, turned up to the right stuff. But they didn't know Jesus. They had Jesus right in front of them. They heard his words. But they didn't have a relationship with Jesus. Their hearts, their hearts were hard and not soft to be receptive to the message. Turn, turn and be forgiven. If you identify any of that Pharisee kind of behavior, you can turn from that, have a new path and be forgiven. So that's how potentially we can change and then a word on invitation. Because what Jesus does with, surrounded by masses of people, surrounded by uh, Pharisees and people who have come out to hear him speak, is that actually he, he, he throws out the parable. Do you notice the first half of the section we've read together this morning, he throws out the, the parable with kind of no explanation, and then he retreats uh, to a kind of an inner circle of the, of the 12, of, the, of his closest friends. And that's who he explains it to. Uh, and as they, he explains it, they get it. And as we kind of have it explained to us, here and now, we, we kind of start to get it, don't we? And so I think there's an invitation uh, for you and for me uh, to, to not be just one that hears and does not understand, as he said in verse 9. 
but to be invited into the inner circle of friends, to, to know him, to walk with him, to follow him, to be forgiven by him, uh, to know him directly. And so would you take up that invitation if you haven't already? Uh, to, to not be uh, on the outside, uh, but to be invited into the inner circle of, of friends that say, I have a relationship with Jesus. I don't just hear his words and they bounce off from a hard heart, a hard soul, but actually I, I have a relationship with the one who is, is the seed himself. And so may you, my friends, have soft hearts. May you accept that invitation. And may you turn and be forgiven. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you especially to Graham and to Philly, also to Will and to Sean. We're going to close by reading a few words from Romans chapter 11 and then saying the words of the grace. Romans 11 verse 33. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. 
Who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counsellor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay him? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. And as we think of one another, let us say the words of the grace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen.